By this time you might be thinking to yourself, maybe I should just call a plumber. Do you have a little bit of fear maybe even built up inside you that maybe you shouldn't mess with plumbing? You don't want to screw this up, you want to make sure you get it right. Or maybe you're just searching the web and you cannot find the proper answer the, on what kind of drain do I actually need. Check out the video and I'll show you. Joel the Tender here and in this video I'm going to show you how to install a drain inside a custom shower. Now we're going to show you or I'm going to show you how to install this drain whether you want to plug it into an old drain that you have already existing in the floor. You don't want to mess with the plumbing you just want to put a new drain in and hopefully tie into the old system. I'm going to also show you how to move a drain. If you want to move a drain I'm going to show you how to cut away the floor, how to move that drain and extend some piping things like that we're gonna go through all of those things now I do want to talk to you a little bit about the type of process that we're gonna use here now the drain system that I'm using is meant for a topical membrane so I put a membrane over the top of the shower pan whether it be paintable or a fabric membrane and that's gonna stop the water at the top and so this drain system that I'm using is meant for the water to come down the shower pan to the drain and flow right down the drain um, not the old school way where you have a pan liner where the water's got to go all the way through the pan then get to the pan liner and make its way to the drain. So I'm not going to overcomplicate this at all. This is a great system. I've been using it for years now and I think that you're really going to like it too. So hey, here, let's watch. So what I'm going to talk to you now is the drain. That's the next step I want to do. And what I need to do is this is a Schlurdy, uh, Schluter Curdy drain. It's the drain I use most of. I used to use the Hydrovan drain. I like this one a lot better. And so one of the main reasons why I like this better is because this part right here is going to go into here and instead of having to screw it in when you're doing your tile installation you can just push it down to the right height. It's really a nice drain. I, I just really like it. Comes in a few different styles. You can also use it to a like right now I'm going to show you, I'm going to figure out where this is going to go and then I have to cut a new pipe to the trap to get this fastened. And if you already have an existing drain that you're going to use that the type of drain I'm talking about is like the one that you would use a pan liner with, you can get an additional part to this kit or get a special drain that's made for that where you just can attach this drain right to that existing flange which is really nice too it makes it really simple okay I just want to jump in here and just explain this just a little bit more so the piece that you're seeing that's on top of your old drain now this drain that you expose in your floor could be a different color it could be white could be green could be black who knows what color it might be but it looks similar to this so you'll unbolt that ring that's on there that was holding the pan liner down and you'll throw that away clean the drain up nicely and then this kit this Schluter drain kit which I will have links in the description that you can click on and go check out you're gonna get the different type of kit where it has that rubber gasket that with the orange on it silver and orange ring that is gonna have uh, in that kit it's gonna also have some curdy fix is what they're gonna call it you're gonna put that around the drain and you're gonna stick that gasket on bolt it back on and then that drain is literally going to be able to just slide right into that rubber gasket and that's it you're done really that simple let's watch but anyway some of the things that come in here are outside corners there's two of them and you can order more of these if you need them now i don't have any outside corners like right here inside the shower but where I use these outside corners is right here. So I'd cut this down to size, and then this is how I'm gonna waterproof around the curb. So I will end up cutting this to fit, or my curb's gonna stand taller, so it might actually not need to be cut once I get to it. 
And then the inside corners, it comes with four of them. And those would just go right there. Just like that, after I get the pan in. So these things are really nice. A really nice addition. Plus it comes with this, which is a seal that you would thin set around this pipe. Then that gets thin setted. I'll show you how to do that later. Also, there's this seal that will go around the valve. This also comes with two templates. This is how big I'm gonna cut the floor out for the drain. That's the hole that I'm gonna make right there, or you can use this part, either way. And then this template is what you're gonna use if you use Curdy membrane to seal the shower pan, to waterproof the wa shower pan, which I'm going to. That would be the template that you would use to cut where this needs to be cut for when you put the Curdy membrane on. And that will be in another video. So if it's not in this one, just look for it. I'll have it marked, um, waterproofing a shower pan with Curdy membrane. And we'll talk more about this. This goes together pretty simple. This just clicks on here and then the drain actually will click right inside of this. And I'll, I'll talk more about this part once we're done, but it adjusts up and down during the tile installation. So when I wanna get this even with the tile, I'm just gonna press it down, but it'll be down in here. And I'll just press that down to where I need it to be lined up with the tile until I get it to that level and then that's how it will stay. And this will have thin set in here to hold it in place then. You'll see that part later when I'm tiling the shower pan. Okay, so if you need to reposition your drain or get access to your plumbing, you're gonna have to cut a hole in the subfloor. It's gonna be the only way, unless you have access underneath in a basement where you can get access to that plumbing, most people are gonna have to cut open their subfloor. And I wanna just tell you not to be afraid of this. You can always brace your subfloor where you cut the hole. So you can run braces across from joist to joist if you have to cut it a certain way to give you that bracing that you're gonna need to be able to stick that piece that you cut out right back in. So I just wanna tell you, don't be afraid of this. And realistically what you're doing is you wanna try to find where the joists are. Once you find the joists, then you can determine where you're gonna cut that rectangle square or whatever shape it's gonna be out of your floor. You want to try to remove any nails or screws that are going to be in the way while you're cutting with your circular saw. And then just bring the depth of that saw blade just a hair, a sixteenth of an inch past what your subfloor thickness is. So if your subfloor is three quarters of an inch, cut it at thirteen sixteenths or three quarter big is what we say in the trades. Um, and if you have a double subfloor where it's like an inch and a quarter, same thing. You're going to want to go like an inch and five sixteenths. So you just cut just barely past that subfloor into the joist just a smidge and then you pull that piece out and you'll be able to have access to your plumbing and see what maybe you might need to brace and see if you can move your plumbing but to get to the point where i'm trying to figure out how to center the the pan so basically i'm going to measure the width of the pan and then we're going to measure the length of the pan and each of those numbers we're going to divide right in half. So if it's 30 inches, we're going to make it at 15 is center, right? 30 divided by 2 is 15. And then same thing, do the same thing with the length. And once we find dead center, you can figure and determine, is that where you can move your drain or not? Or however else you want to do this. But let's continue watching the video so I can explain how I'm centering my drain. So here, let's watch. I'll show you how you can get this exactly perfect. I'm going to come over here and make a mark at 28 and a quarter in two spots. I'm gonna come right here and do the same thing. Make 15, make a mark at 15 there and 15 here. And then just get a straight edge of some sort that will actually fit in here. And I'm just gonna draw those two lines, a long line kind of awkward using this because I that's all I have in here right now 
but it works. Now, on this template, you can see, and I darkened them in already, it has little lines in this template that you can see. So if you just line these up, good enough, just draw a line around the circle. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my jigsaw. You can use whatever you have for a saw. You can drill a hole in there first, however you wanna do it. But what I do is I just turn my jigsaw on and then I'm gonna tip in with it. Now I do have a good blade on here. Like I said, I didn't attach this down yet, so now I can see that my trap doesn't exactly line up perfect there, so I need to cut this pipe back. So I'm going to cut a few inches off of this, and then I'm going to get my trap ready to go, and I'll show you how to figure out how big, how much pipe we need to add on to get this drain sitting exactly where it's supposed to be. Okay, something else that came inside that Schluter drain kit for these four little styrofoam pieces. Now these are a guide to use with the drain where you just slide them in. And that is how I'm gonna measure now to get my proper height of this flange and the pipe inside there that I'm gonna need. Okay, I just wanna stop right there and talk a little bit more about the styrofoam. Now these styrofoam guides that come in the Schluter kit are actually meant for use for their preformed pan. So you slide these in and it gives you the exact perfect height for that drain to fit when you use one of their preformed pans. Now if you're going to do a preformed pan, use that. Now I also want to talk to you or mention that now they have two different types of styrofoam in there. There's a yellow one and a white one. I believe it's yellow, but there's instructions in there that are going to guide you to which ones you need if you're going to use that preformed pan. Now I am going to actually raise this drain up another half inch because I like my drain, my pans to be at least an inch to an inch and a quarter thick to start. And I'm talking about a custom shower pan when you are going to make it your own pan. I like to have at least that thickness so that it really gives me a lot of strength on that shower pan and I never need to worry about it. So either way, whichever way you go here, just keep those things in mind. And if you have questions, let me know um, in the comments and I'll help you through this. All right, let's watch. Now this is, ends up only being three quarters of an inch. I like to come a little higher. I like to start my drain out at about, an, my pan out at an inch and a quarter. So I slide these half inch pieces of curdy board under here, which you can use half inch sheetrock or whatever you want to do. But I like to bring mine up to an inch and a quarter. Okay, I don't know if you can see that down there real well, but what I need to do is I need to measure and to get the proper measurement of the pipe, I need to measure where the lip stops on the pipe and where it stops on the drain and here I'll show you what I'm talking about if you look under here you can see that little ridge that's where I want to stop the drain so I'm going to measure for that to that while it's sitting on there and then you can see there's another one right there that little ridge where it stops right there you can be a little short but you don't want to be long so I'm going to cut mine at about four and a quarter. And so I'm just going to go measure this, or I'm going to measure this, I'm going to mark it, and I'm going to go and just cut this on my chop saw so I get a nice straight cut with it. Okay, so another thing that you want to be sure is that this pipe right here that's running for your drain, that you have a slant to it. I think it's an eighth inch of foot at least. But just be sure that you have that slanted before you put everything together and glue it. That's just something that you're going to keep in mind. But I cut that other part now. And so now I'm going to put all this together. And, and so to put PVC together, you just use pur I just use purple primer. And then I just prime around. Give it a good clean. And you want to do that to everything that you're going to fit together. And 
now I'm going to start cementing everything and putting it back together. When you put this together, you just put it together and then you give it a twist. You got a little bit of time to work with some of this, but not a whole lot. sure I'm all even where I need to be. And the same thing with the drain. You're going to stick it on and give it a twist. We're going to let this sit for a little bit and then what we're going to do is we're going to end up putting the drain and we'll make sure you want to make sure this is level too while you're doing this but we're also after it sets up we can work with it it can move up for me because I have a little room there and then we're going to stick some screws in here to hold this in place while we're doing the mortar bed okay so you can see it's not too difficult to install a drain inside a custom shower it might be a little bit of work to it and it might not be it really depends on your situation and I think that you'll agree that this is actually not as difficult as maybe you thought it would be um, anyway this is just one video of a custom shower series that I have and you can go to my YouTube channel and check those out now in there you might you would be able to find another video that is talking about custom shower drains if you have a concrete slab go look for that video and I'll walk you through a little bit more than what we talked about in this video also just go to my playlist look for the custom shower series and then go ahead and click on that and you'll be able to find all the videos there from this entire shower I will walk you through from the very beginning all the way to the very end so you'll be able to see step by step now I just want to say don't overwhelm yourself don't get TMI too much information going on by thinking you need to go in there and watch every video at once. I mean, we, hey, I've been there. I go watch videos too. And I, the last thing you want to do is watch video after video after video. But you know, if you take this step by step, I'll bring you through each step where you only need to go and watch a little bit of one video and then move on or do that step and then move on to the next one. So just break it down. It'll make it a lot easier for you. Um, all the things that we talked about, the drains. Now, I, the drains, I just want you to know that you can get a wide variety of different grates that you would see on top of that drain. You're not stuck with just the one that you've seen in this video. You really have a lot of options there. And if you go below and click on the links, that'll bring you to a page on my website. You'll be able to click on all the different things that you see in this video and others, um, as far as tools that I use, supplies that I use, any items that you think that I'm that you see me using inside the shower, you'll be able to get. You'll be able to check those out on my site, and it'll. I'll show you where I get them and where you can get them. So go check that out. Hey, just one more thing. I just want to tell you, we can all be saved by Jesus Christ. If I can be saved, so can you. Hey, I'm Joel Attender. Have a great day.